If my girlfriend knew how much I spend on fishing, I'd probably be single. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well in this weird time of lockdown. My name is Reese. you know the drill. I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help people catch fish. So if you are new here and you want to learn more, please press that red subscribe button and smash the bell so that you don't miss out on future content. Okay, so you've asked for this video, so I'm giving it to you. So I'm gonna break this up into three pieces. First of all, we're going to look at the rods. Second of all, we're gonna look at the box. And third of all, we're gonna look at what's in the box. Within Phipps Moosh, you can set up with three rods by the bank side at any one time and only fish one rod. So by habit, I've just got used to adopting that approach wherever I go fishing. Okay, so the first rod we're using is a Hardy Jet Syntrix 6 weight. Why this rod? It's basically my go-to rod if I'm ever fishing dries or fishing bung. And it kind of offers me the right balance between something robust enough to check out the full line, but also sensitive enough to fish dries in the summer. Okay, rod number two. So this is the Reddington Red Fly. It's about 20 years old. It's been in our family, God knows how long. It's a 10 foot for a seven weight. It is robust, it's strong, but it's also pretty heavy compared to today's rods. Why am I using this rod? You know what it's like after a couple of years, you just get used to fishing one specific rod and it becomes a part of you. Well, that's what it is for me. And this is my go-to rod if I'm ever fishing with lures or boobies on a die line, for example. It's caught trout, it's caught carp, it's caught suing, it's caught salmon. It's a pretty robust rod and I'm hoping it stays with me for years more to come. Okay, so you'd be quite surprised at this. This is a Shakespeare Enigma Supra 10 foot for a six weight. It's a four piece rod it's cheap as chips, they cost 40 quid. So the reason why I've got this is I got tired of paying stupid amount of money to replace a piece of a rod when it broke. Sometimes we have to pay upwards of 90 pounds for one piece of a rod. And if I gotta be honest, if you break rods once every two years, it's just not worth it. So what we ended up doing was we bought five or six of them about four years ago, and they've become a staple part of how we fish now. I've got a couple of six weights and a couple of seven weights here, which predominantly are used to fish buzzers. If budget is a problem and you want to expand your array and tackle from one rod to three rods so that you can fish more quickly and conveniently when you're out, this is a solid option three rods for 120 quid, who wouldn't say yes to that? So those are the three rods I use. Now let's jump straight into the box. So the box I'm using is a very simple Shakespeare box. You can get one in the UK for about 50 quid at the moment, and all you need to do then is buy some trays like these, which I think are about 12 pound to keep your things in. So the only slight amendment I've done to these, I've added a plank of wood, drilled in both sides there, because the one problem you have with trays like these is that if you put too much in, there's too much tension on the edges here. So by drilling in a wood insert on either side, it'll carry that weight for you much better and you won't have any problems with the ends breaking. I've also modified the box slightly for convenience. So what I've done is I've drilled a hole straight through the middle, I put a metal piston through and then covered that with foam. And then the idea then is basically to pre-make my casts the night before a competition or a day out, mark them up, roll them around the foam, and then you're good to go. You can obviously use circle foam like these, but what I like the most about this is that all I need to do is take the fly line braided loop, attach it to the end of the leader, and then just pull up. I haven't got to worry about anything falling or the line catching where it shouldn't. It'll just come straight off, and I'm fishing within a minute. So what's in the box? Let's have a look at the lines first. So we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 lines. I don't need 20 lines. There are a couple of lines that haven't been used in two or three years. So what have I got? Okay, so for example, we've got four floaters. We've got a Cortland Mint Green floater, a Cortland Peach floater, an Airflow 40 Plus floater, and then we've got a clear glass floater. Those, those three are seven weights, this is a six weight, and I've never used it, but it's been in the box about a year. Okay, and then moving down, we're gonna to go to the sink tips. So we've got a Rio midge tip, we've got a airflow slow tip, we've got a airflow fast tip, and then onto the glass lines, we've got an airflow slow glass, an airflow fast glass, old Cortland blue, new Cortland blue, camo Cortland fly line, a 40 plus slow intermediate, a 40 plus fast intermediate, a die three sweep, die five sweep, 
day seven, day eight, and a booby basher. And then finishing it off, we've got a Rio Aqualux. It's too much, I, I don't need that many lines. So, what do we do with all these? Well, I think if you're fishing locks, there's an argument to say yes, you do need most of those lines because you're covering so much water, different depths, with wind speed playing a factor in your fishing that you've got to balance that out with a great choice of lines. And you know what it's like, you're out fishing on a lake, you're fishing your preferred line, which is a airflow slow tip, and the person next to you on the boat has got one of the new real lines, which is just sinking a bit slower than yours, and they're trouncing you. So then you have to go out and buy that line. So, yeah, you don't need all of these lines if you're gonna fish small still waters. If you're fishing locks and you're serious about competition fishing, then I would probably say yes, you do. Okay, now let's move on to Tippet. So we have got Rio Powerflex Copolymer, Rio Fluoroflex Fluorocarbon, Airflow G5 Fluorocarbon, Airflow G3 Fluorocarbon, Fulling Mill Fluorocarbon, and Stroft GTM. So there now we've got five different types of leader and there's not just one spool, there are four, five in there, five there, three there, four there, two there. There are niches where all of them will come in handy. And then we move on to tools, forceps, hunts, original gink, density mud, top right, and then priest, hat, glasses, and then flights. So, to give you an idea, this is my snakes and buzzers, nymphs, dries box. If you look at the first two rows, you'll just see red holographic gel barks, about 50 of them. Next up is my fabs, sparklers, boobies, lobs. Then we've got a box of cormorants. Not something I fish with that much, to be honest, but there is always a day where they will work better than anything. A small box to cover nymphs and dries. Big fry bashing flies, and then finally my eggs, blobs, worms, and lures. In terms of reels, I fish with three airflow switches. They're a nice mid-market priced reel. They do the job, and now on every fly fisherman in the UK uses these reels because of the price point and because of how reliable they are. So that is what is in my box 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.